Welcome to the High Line. My name is Bridget Gramling, and I'll be your guide at the park today. The High Line is maintained, operated, and programmed by the nonprofit Friends of the High Line in partnership with the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation. We're starting our journey in the Donald Pells and Wendy Keys Gansevoort Woodland at the southernmost point of the park. The High Line is a mile and a half, or about two and a half kilometers long, and we're going to walk the majority of it. First, some history about the park. When railroads came to New York in the 1830s, they ran at street level. Cars, horses, and pedestrians all competed for space to move. The train traffic created severe gridlock in the area, making it increasingly dangerous for pedestrians. In the early 1900s, civilians fought to end the use of the tracks along street level. After years of negotiations, the city came up with the West Side Improvement Project, which involved creating the High Line, an elevated railway which would carry freight trains full of meat and other goods directly to factories. Construction of the High Line began in 1929, and it was officially opened for use on June 28, 1934. It originally ran from Spring Street to just north of 34th Street, where it connected with the New York Central Line. The High Line ran as an active freight railroad until 1980. The rail tracks can still be seen in the walkways and planting beds of the park. Today, the High Line is an elevated public park on the west side of Manhattan. Through our work with communities on and off the park, we're devoted to reimagining the role public spaces have in creating connected, healthy neighborhoods and cities. This is evident in our world-class gardens, public art program, and community engagement initiatives. In fact, we're passing through one of our commissioned art projects right now. This piece by Sam Falls, called Untitled, Four Arches, was on view in the park from July 2019 through March 2021. It's a series of ceramic archways embedded with various plants from the park, such as toad lilies, fringe trees, choke cherries, and thimbleweed. In 1999, almost 20 years after the train stopped running, the city held a meeting to decide what to do with the aging structure, which had since become a wild, self-seeded landscape. Only two neighbors at the meeting, Robert Hammond and Joshua David, were passionate about saving and reimagining the structure. They ultimately founded Friends of the High Line and successfully stopped the demolition. The design of the park itself involved a collaboration between the landscape architecture firm James Corner Field Operations, the architecture firm Diller Scafidio Renfro, and Dutch plansman Pete Audelf. The first piece of the High Line, from the southernmost end up to 20th Street, opened to the public in June 2009. This area of the High Line is called the Diller von Furstenberg Sundeck, named for Diane von Furstenberg and Barry Diller, who were early supporters of the High Line. Diane's studio, apartment, and store are all located in the neighborhood. When the High Line was abandoned, a lot of water accumulated here. The designers decided to keep with that theme, so you'll see water-loving plants like horsetail, mallows, and cattails. You'll also find lounge chairs that roll on the rails and a water feature, which is popular with children and birds in the summer months. Speaking of water, let's talk about sustainable water practices on the High Line. The park's landscape is a green roof system with two sustainable water practices. The first is a drip irrigation system programmed to adjust water levels throughout the season. Secondly, the majority of the High Line's pathways are open jointed pavers, ensuring that more rainwater is retained and directed to the planting beds. This strategy reduces our water needs and impact on the city's sewer system. Combined with drought-resistant plants, these systems help keep the High Line's gardens healthy. As we move forward, you can see the old Merchants Refrigerating Warehouse to the west. This building is allegedly where the last delivery on the High Line came in 1980. If you look down on the railway, you can see a fully designed planting bed and an art piece by Laura Schnitger entitled Sister of the Road, which was on view in the park from March 2019 through March 2021. This area of the High Line includes a lot of the invisible innovation that makes the park special. The lighting on the High Line is mostly at waist level and below, so visitors aren't blinded at night and can see the few stars still visible in the city. This grove of maple trees on the western side is planted in large fiberglass boxes suspended from the bottom of the structure. Over 500 different plant species live on the High Line. About half are native to North America, with half of those being native to this region. The High Line is a harsh environment. We're colder in winter, hotter in summer, and the wind is stronger here than at street level. So Pete Audelf, our original garden designer, chose hardy plants that can survive the conditions no matter where they're from. 
Turning the old rail line into a park required lots of work. Plants, ballast, ties, rails, toxins, and a foot of concrete had to be removed. The structure was then waterproofed, painted, and rebuilt. Most of the High Line is in the Chelsea neighborhood, which is known for its art galleries. Many of these apartment buildings and condos have galleries in them at street level, and many of the old warehouses have dozens of galleries inside. To the east of the park, you can see another art piece commissioned for the High Line, a large mural that encompasses the side of a building. Entitled The Bay Falls, this mural is the first by renowned portrait artist Jordan Castile. This specific portrait is a woman named Falu and her brother, Baydemba So. Falu and her brother are pictured outside the Studio Museum in Harlem, where she sells personally designed hats to visitors and other New Yorkers. This work extends the Harlem sidewalk to the park, connecting public spaces of different neighborhoods across the city. It was on view in the park from December 2019 through summer 2021. We're now on the flyover. It's the one spot on the High Line where we can plant across the entire width as the pedestrian paths soar above the original structure and through a canopy of magnolia, sassafras, and serviceberry trees. On both sides of the High Line, historic warehouses protect the plants from wind and sun, creating a whole new microclimate where delicate species of fern and woodland ground covers can thrive. Expect to see an array of blue and white from our common snowdrops Siberian bugloss, and white trilliums. Our big leaf magnolias are another standout here. These prehistoric looking trees, evident from their huge leaves, are one of three different magnolia species in the park. This particular species can reach 40 feet in height when mature, giving this section of the park its dense greenery. This area of the park is the final remaining section of the original railway. Just next door, we have Hudson Yards, home to a neighboring cultural institution, The Shed. Designed by Diller, Scafidio and Renfro, the architecture firm which helped design the High Line, The Shed is a community arts building notable for its bubbled looking surface. This surface is a rolling roof that sits on top of the actual building and it's used to create a climate controlled indoor space on the public plaza. The passageway we are in is known as the Coach Passage. With 60 foot tall ceilings, various seating benches and balconies, this is a perfect spot to relax and see different views of the city, the park, and the development. We've reached the end of our tour. There's still plenty more to the High Line, and although the park now encompasses the full length of the original structure, our work isn't over as we are always improving the park in new ways. A big thank you to our presenting green sponsor, TD Bank, for the support of the High Line's horticulture efforts and for their help in producing this video. Thank you for taking the time to virtually tour the park. I hope you'll come visit in person soon.